All right, we're live. Welcome to episode, I think, six of the Pro Go Paduk and Weichi podcast. Uh, it's me again, Shao Dai. And we again have Gaza. Gaza. Yeah. I can't believe it. Um, the sound capture last time was pretty shite, shall we say. And uh, it was it was probably bad before that as well. But I, I we tested this time around, so it should be good to yeah yeah let's get let's, yeah let's get into it um last week we were we were talking about the um go second cup how it's like the wild cards are decided um i i didn't end up at the beginning figuring out who the europeans name were in actually like, i don't think we discussed this um last time this was right um this was posted after the podcast okay i see um so we we'll just quickly discuss the uh, the wild card. We knew about the the Kim Hyun Min's win, the twenty point five win, uh, yeah, in the Daeju Cup. So so in so basically the fifth Wu Ching Wen Cup. I think it's a bit of an odd timing because they have postponed this and they announced the wild card. What's going yes. on? Yes, <laughs> very odd. <laughs> this is the most odd thing um, that we that, that that happens now. We we didn't discuss this on the, on this podcast, but. Uh, Zhou Hongyu, his she's widely regarded as the second strongest, or maybe even the strongest, uh, women player in China. She uh, and and in China they held a qualification tournament for Wu Qingyuan Cup, and she just like came, she didn't make it. She she got into the the, the bottom rungs, so she didn't make uh, Wu Qingyuan Cup proper in the qualification tournament, and so uh, so they gave her a wild card. So Zhou Hongyu is the first wild card. And of course, we got Hei Jia Jia, Joanne Missingham. This might be her second or third time getting a wild card in the Wu Qingyuan Cup. I'm but sure she would have gotten a wild card the last time. She she did right. compete in the last one, I think. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah no, she, no, she definitely competed in the last one because right, she right. played against um, Cho shong I remember yeah. that. Right. And if I if I remember correctly, she, she got the wild card like twice in a row. Um, so... It, it 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 feels like it's like her third wild card this time, which is which is a bit much to to be giving the wild card to the same player every time. Does does this happen in any other kind of sports like tennis? Uh, yeah, uh, this is def this is definitely her. Um, so she was in the first Wu Ching Wan Cup. Yeah, and she was in the third one, and she was in the fourth one. But I don't know which ones she got wild cards in. Right. Okay, so but anyway, she definitely got the wild card this time. Now there was some other uh, new information in in this pose, which is that Feng Yun, uh, she's a she's a woman nine dan, but she lives in America and she she got the wild. Uh, she she she's the uh, one of the uh, North American uh, reps, Ying Ming Ming, who who became pro in uh, China but went to the U.S. to study or something, and and she's uh, I believe she she married Ryan Lee another professional player from the US and uh, she she's coming um, so that's that's the I, I apologize that, I think that's actually not surprising because they've actually they've actually both participated in all four previous right. Wu Qingyuan cups so, so so Feng Yun and Ying Ming Ming might just be the strongest uh, women player in the US at the moment um, yes i would i would say so yeah. they they probably they may be the only pro players right um, representing yeah. the US yeah and of course, Feng Yun was one of the f first women nine dance. So yeah, she was the second one after Rui Nawe, who right. is also competing. In right, this which is nuts if you think about it. Yes, yeah, Rui, I believe, would be 60, 61, somewhere around there. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Feng Yun wouldn't be much younger. No, so and the European, there's two European spots. Uh, I I couldn't figure out their their names in Roman uh, uh letters. So I just posted their, their their names in Chinese, just hoping someone would find it. But actually, I, I eventually uh, kind of figured out who they were, and and some of them are thanks to you, Gaza, because you you told me about one of them was Dina, Badok Badok Badakova, right? Right. So I googled her name, and I found that she won some uh the one maybe the European Women's Championship or something, and in that same tournament, I found this uh Virginia shall never uh and and then i just looked at her chinese name which which i thought was was virginia 
something, but, but I couldn't find anyone called Virginia. But then I, I realized actually, yeah, that's the just maybe just a different spelling. It's like a, maybe the Russian spelling or something. I I, I really don't know. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But we but we we but I, I we, we figured it out who 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 they were. Um. So that that was good. And of course, the other players we already know. So China, we've got Yu Zhiying, Lu Mingquan, Wang Yubo, Li Xiaoxi, Wu Yiming, Li He, Rui Naiwei, Wang Chenxing. Very strong lineup. On Korea, we've got Choi Jong, Oh Yu Jin, Kim Chie Yang, Kim Yunji, Cho Seong Ah. Yeah, maybe, the, that's the unanimous top five in yeah, Korea. So maybe even a stronger lineup. Um, in Japan, we also have uh, Fujisawa Rina, Yuno Asami, Xie Yiming, Suzuki, and Yumi. Uh, maybe so Sumi, Sumire is missing. Okay, yeah. Um, well, anyway, and for Taiwan, we see her again, Lu Yuhua. Uh, and we talked about all the other players. So there we go. Um, and in 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 the voting, we we have uh Choi Jong the 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 favorite, and then followed by Fujisawa Rina. Uh, no one fancies any other players, so that's a bit of a surprise. But uh, hey, that's it is what it is. Mm. Yeah. Yes. All right. So that's that's it for the to the fifth uh, Wu Qingyuan Cup update. Wait, um, wait a sec, wait a sec. Right. Are you sure that Ji Yimin is is participating in that one? I thought it was Sumire instead of Ji Yimin. Oh, did I um did I did I transcribe it incorrectly? Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think that's a something that can be edited later. I'm I'm quite sure it's Sumire. I, I've just checked the um, Japanese news article about the postponement and and they they're saying that it's sumire yeah so i i, I might i might have just transcribed it wrong because I, I was looking at another article oh wait a sec wait wait just check it now yeah no it says sumire yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah see it was, it no was problem yeah, yeah so so sorry about that that's a mistake jimin was um is notably absent yeah from yeah. the wuching one cup it's but sumire is playing yeah that's right um so but uh, this this is a perfect segue into the next item, which is uh, Nakamura Sumire, and right. they, apparently they they did a, they did an interview, and maybe with her mother as well. Her mother just said, uh, Sumire may not study senior high, so that's that's like year ten to twelve, you know. Um, In Australia, yeah, yeah, that would be year ten to twelve. That would be like high school but the second half of high school in in elsewhere, I guess, uh, depending on where you're, maybe the US. Yes. Uh, so. I mean, does that sound remotely surprising? Um, it it does sound uh, it it does sound like something that could have happened, um, especially with Sumire um, joining the professional ranks so early. Yeah, and I I do I do recall reading up or seeing some um, videos about. Koreans who turn pro very early, and I, I think that they instead of going to normal high school, they basically go to Baduk school. Yeah. Um. So it it seems like a normal thing in in Korea at least. Yeah. And probably in China as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I'm I always. It's it's hard for me to put myself in in their shoes. Obviously, I'm a big proponent of getting an education. Yeah. Um. So I guess it's to me personally, it's it's a little disappointing that they're not completing their high school yeah. graduation. But these are obviously uh, exceptional circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as you mentioned, it is it is a little bit like a norm in in uh, China and Korea. I, I actually listened to a podcast in uh, in China, and they said. One of the reasons why a Japanese girl has kind of fallen behind competitively at the elite, at the elite of the elite level, is really because um, just the Japanese players just don't really uh, aren't, aren't as um, what, what how, how should we say it like not not as uh, fully invested into this one profession which is you know playing go uh, versus like Korea and China because they 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 actually go to normal schools and and finish their studies usually. I, right. I, I'm not sure if it's by law or it's by choice, but um, in China, definitely. I, I just listened to a a, a, a po- podcast of a famous uh, of a popular a Taiwanese uh, Go YouTuber. So he actually went to China, went to Beijing to study Go, and he talked about what the what they call the dojos are like in China. So basically, they start in the morning. They do a run. That's their exercise. Then they have breakfast, and then it's the first round of games, 
and then after that in the afternoon maybe they do some study and then another round of games so over a three-day period they would have played about uh, five games which complete a ra a single round robin of six players so so the dojo that, that, he, that he went to was organized into uh, rungs of six players each and and each each uh, six player group forms a league and you get to promote or get demoted um, every three days so uh, that's so so therefore there's, there's actually absolutely no time for these kids to to go to uh, school um, and then that's and that's their regime until they either make pro or or something something else so so I believe a lot of young kids when they make pro at 12 and 13 their parents would uh, decide not to uh, put them through the like the professional weichi competitions and actually get them to go back to school. So after they achieved the, the in pro Japan in, in China in China. Oh right. So like, like, yes, but but before they make pro, they would just stay in this dojo and that's their re regime for the right. For the whole week. Yeah, which is which is actually crazy. So in one week they study for, I believe at least six days. Maybe they have a, like a one day off, and in six days they complete complete like you know two round robins and they, they would have promotions and demotions and every month they would play a big swiss tournament uh, and reset their their ranking in the league um so uh that that's the regime that i uh, uh, that i learned about um but that's that sounds like very intense that's, that's funny because you say this so when they're studying to become pro you say they play maybe 10 games a week yeah but in china how yeah. how long does it take the pros to play 10 games <laughs> Well, it takes a long time, so <laughs> you know. The, 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 that that reminds me. Uh, the, one of the one of the top pros in China, Yang Kai Wan, he's a is a regular Jia Liga. I he actually once messaged me because I post posted some calculations, some tournament simulations on Weibo, the Chinese equivalent of Twitter. He actually directly messaged me and asked me some questions about that. So he's a uh, uh, no, he's, he, he, but he's a very he's a top pro. And he complained on Weibo that at one year he he'd only played eleven games or thirteen games, and he was in the top ninety top ten percentile of games played for Chinese pros that year. So oh that God. that that's kind of crazy if you think about it. It's just not uh, maybe just not enough competitions around. Um, yeah. In China, so maybe a lot of the Chinese pros end up um, you know, just teaching go. Um, that's that's their profession. But uh, anyway. So, and uh, that's, that's, that's that, I guess. And I guess because Japan is so unusual, uh, you might have heard about this uh, Shoki protege, Sota Fuji. He, he kind of made headlines just by announcing that he will not finish high school. Like, I think he talked to his principal and said, oh, I'm, I'm like a three title holder in Shogi. Uh, I don't <laughs> want to finish high school. His principal was like, yeah, hey, okay. So, but that, that actually made headlines. So, um, some cute photos of Sumire. Probably have seen them before, but uh, I believe that might be his father, uh, her father. Yeah, yeah. And her father's also a, a, a pro, right? A pro, yeah. I believe a nine ten as well. Yeah. So that that's that. I believe her mother is also a pro. I believe so. Um, pro okay. Wichita. Yeah. Yay! And and after that, what have we got? We have we are on to. Uh, Gosei forty seventh Gosei. Um, this I think this was the biggest um, game in Japan this week, right? I mean, uh, yes. So this is the, this is this is the basically the forty seventh go say, a, a go say the challenger uh, the challenger determination tournament. That's like a knockout, and this is yes. we're talking about the final of that knockout tournament to determine who. Yes. So the winner of this will challenge the current title holder, who is Iyama Yuta. Iyama Yuta, yes. And uh, it was again between Ichiriki, Rio, and Yu Chengchi. They've played before, haven't they? Yes, several times. Yeah. Um, the, weren't, weren't they in the uh, playoff for the Honimbo Challenger as well? Oh, yes, yes. That was the big thing that they were both involved in recently. Yes. yes, the, yes. Um, they, they finished equal first in the Honimbo yeah. um, tight league. Yeah. And so they had, they had a one game playoff. So I yeah. guess this is. Round two for round, them. round two, them. and <laughs> and unfortunately for for you, uh, Ichiriki won uh, both of them. So, um, so Ichiriki won, so he's gonna win the right to challenge uh, Yamayuta. 
and Yama Yuta took the title from Ichiriki last term, so uh, by a score of uh, two to three. So, yeah, so he's fought all the way back. He he would have yeah. had to win, I think, four games to get back. Yeah, to seek his revenge, and he's he's done that. Yeah, and that's the end end state of the game. Uh, they were just uh, yeah, fighting it, occur. Yeah, it was a fairly, it was a relatively quiet game. Right. Um. Hard to, uh, it's hard to say relative, but there wasn't much in terms of aggression. There was, um, there was definitely, you know, there was a Moyo on the right that was invaded by White. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. Um, but who who was um yeah Ichiriki was black and and Ichiriki. yeah he he maneuvered things quite well. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, that 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 was this, like imagine if this white group wasn't in here, that that whole thing was black's moyo and white just jumped in, and managed to live, but eventually this 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 got killed. Or, or, it was but, it was a good invasion, yeah, for yeah. sure, but it wasn't enough in the end. Yeah, no, and ended up this this was gonna get killed by a, by a co here, so that's when you resigned. Um, so that's that. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, the group on the left ended up dying. Yeah, yeah. so that's. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the that's the big one. So Ichiriki. Uh, well, yeah. I, I mean, one more question about the uh, Gose. Yeah, is it true that it's named after Gose again? Uh, that's actually a big no. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> now maybe it's worth explaining because there's another uh, title in in uh, in Japan called the Kisei. So so Sei must mean something. So Sei, I believe it's. The rough translation is like a saint or someone who's highly skilled at something you call them a say so that that would be like the, the same in probably china and, and japan the same same word um so yeah it's just something that's highly regarded uh key happens to mean board game but in this particular case obviously it means the board game of weichi i believe in shogi they also have a title called kisei so the key just means uh board game in general but yeah they yeah, do yeah, yeah. Yep. And Go obviously just means the game Go, and uh, it's this is actually a very interesting, interesting one because Kisei in China is translated directly just like board game saint, but Go say in China is called little, uh, little board game saint because the word for Go it's um, I believe it originally came from China but it's not not really no longer really used. To describe the game of Go, so they so when they translate Go say into China, they call it Little Board Game Saint instead of uh, whatever the the Go character happens to be. So that's a little bit of trivia for you. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's it's meant to exist. But that leads us to Kisei League A, the second tier in the Kisei system. Yeah, I think this is played on the same day. Yeah. We call um, Konorin. Versus Yamashita Kaigo. Yeah, two yeah. multiple former multiple title holders. I'm I'm not sure if you'd call Conor Rin a multiple title holder. Well, I mean he held the same title multiple times. Yes. That's what I mean. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. Okay. So he's only ever won one 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 title. Yeah. He's only of the seven majors. He's only won the Tengen. Yeah. But he did. He did hold that for three years in a row. Yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah. So. Maybe we'll find out about my opinion about Conor Rin so hey, later on. But uh, let's just say I'm not his biggest fan. Uh, <laughs> so we got Conor Rin. Uh, he he um he he lost to Yamashita Kaigo, and so Yamashita Kaigo has got three wins out of four. Conor Rin's got two, and Conor Rin's already kind of s oh, there's actually a lot of players on two wins. So um, so let's let's see. I believe the top um top. Two? Notably, Kono Rin and Yamashita Kago were the two players that finished in the bottom two in the S League last ah, year. Right, right. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's actually if I look at the the Japanese players' their ratings, it is actually a bit disappointing because you're in the three twos territory. So if Choi John could easily come in and win the league, like it could happen. You know, um, that would be. It. I I would like to see. Uh, I would certainly like to see the Koreans and the Japanese. Play against each other more often. Yeah. yeah. Um, but unfortunately, these are all hypotheticals. Yeah. 
uh, I think one of the reasons why they don't play more often is that often the, the Chinese, Japanese player gets knocked out in round one or two of the international tournaments. It's completely actually, no, no, I do remember. No, actually, it was um, Cho Shong Ah who, who played Yamashita Kago in the Samsung Cup last ah, yeah, year. Yeah, she lost. Yeah, not Choi Jong because Choi Jong lost to Cho Shong Ah in the qualifier. Right, right, right. Yes. But yeah, no, Yamashita Kago did hold his own against. Um, Cho Shong Ah. Yes, yes. Uh, I think Cho Shong Ah is rating is actually a lot lower than Cho Jong. So, so that was oh a yes, it's a, it's a lot lower. Yeah, yeah. But but I, I think I, I do recall looking at the key three for that game. I think Yamashita Kego does feel like it's a lot stronger than Cho Shong Ah. So there's there's that. Um, but yeah, but I I I imagine Cho Jong would be at least very competitive in League A. Um, but anyway, I, I would agree. I would yeah. agree. Yeah. So. Uh, but Ligue does, does have some legends, uh, Hane Naoki. So, and Sun, yes. Sun Jae is meant to be a young and upcomer. Um, so let's let's see let's see what happens. Uh, but two, the top two gets promoted back to the uh, S League, and the top one gets a chance to play in the Challenger Determination Tournament. So just so actually, yes. even if you if you just top League A, you still have a chance to challenge for Kise. We might we might. Um, talk about that in this special episode of yeah Kisei we might see your mash the challenge for the kise oh yes uh which 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 will just basically hand it he say to ichiriki uh so but let's oh. see oh it's a bit harsh but that's re- reality. Bit harsh. <laughs> reality is a bit harsh unfortunately uh oh back to the first yk construction cup game 21 kim unji lost to han Woo jin um okay so the YK Construction Cup, the new Korean tournament. I don't think this is a major. Right. Um, but it's also the tournament with the bizarre time control of no main time, 10 one-minute Pyoyomis. Yeah. And Kim yun and Han Woo-jin were the two wild cards that were yes. selected for this tournament, the two young players yep. that were chosen. So they get to mix it with... The nice. the veterans and and the and the top yeah players um, Han Woo Jin had won a game already yep. um, I think he beat yeah, Ryu see. Ryu Min Hyung right yeah um, Kim Yun Ji was winless so far but she did last week have that epic battle with Shin Jin So yeah and she almost. She almost had Shin Jin So. Almost, almost pulled off the upset yeah. of the year. Yeah, that but was um, been, yeah. but yeah, we finally got to see them battle. I, I definitely um, thought Kim Yun Ji yeah. would would actually win yeah. based on her form. Yeah. Um, but no, Han Woo Jin played a very good game. Yeah. Um, managed the time controls better yeah. and pulled out the win. Yeah. Um, so I do feel that Han Woo Jin's rating is actually very underrated because um, he, he he's actually like got one other win already, but Kim and Ji is still zero wins. So yeah, I, I, I just think we just need more key foods for Han to see his rating. Yeah, I think bad. Han suffers from not having that many key food games. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. he's, he is ranked in the top 100 right. in Korea. He's actually ranked above Kim yun Ji at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So, but obviously Korea ranks every game. Yeah. Um, Kifu, recorded or not. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's... But the fortunate thing is that now he's in this tournament, all these games are going to get recorded. Yeah. So he'll definitely have um, a good recording here. And he has won two of them. Yeah. So... Yeah, so he might he might move up in the ratings. ratings that'll uh, that'll give his rating a bit of a boost for yeah. sure. So um, so yeah, let's hope, hope he gets gets up, gets up there. Um, so that's that's the construction cup. There's there basically we'll we'll see more of this later on, more of this league later on. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, so basically, uh, this is the news coming out of China um, from the sixteenth of May till I believe somewhere even to the early June, if I remember correctly. We have the uh, what they call the LG Cup uh, preparation games, and the some basically uh, national preparation games. Uh, I I couldn't find the information on whether these leagues are like 
uh, would count towards rating points, but uh, there's there's a that basically gets like a massive amount of gains for for the other players involved. We'll talk about the league format uh, a bit a bit later, but basically this is just a player signing in. This this leagues is happening in Chuzhou again. You may remember that's where the where they held the the city where they held the Asian game qualifiers and also the Lanker uh, Chuj Chuzhou Lanker Cup. And apparently the Chinese national team was really happy with the Asian game qualifier league format. They had basically 10 strong players play in a league and they just get uh, four, 45 quality games. So they, they decided that the, the, the result of that training was so good, they're going to do it again. And this time in, it's in preparation for the big upcoming tournaments, including LG Cup, the Globus Cup, which is an under-20 tournament, and the Hoban Cup, and of course the Gosegan Cup. The Wu Qingyuan Cup, so, uh, so so all the players, male and female, uh, are back in Chuzhou for like a, a fairly lengthy kind of preparation tournament. Um, yeah, so that's that's the news. That's good news. That's yeah. good news. Good to see that the Chinese players are actually playing games. Yeah, and and I heard in a, in a podcast that uh, they they couldn't do these things. For example, back in say Beijing or Hangzhou, where they where they have actually have the where the Chinese. Weichi Association have big like training centers because the the COVID measures in those places are a bit on the draconian side. So even to enter the building, you have to do tests, uh, and then and it's like it's just too too much. So they just change location to to a place where maybe the the you know COVID isn't as bad, so it's less restrictions around. So they could just play more games, have more people congregate and play more games. But I, I, I'm not really sure. This is a, actually a good idea to have uh, to sort of congregate in one place and do training, because uh, a lot of these international competitions are likely to be online. But these guys are training face to face, so I wonder if That's that, a good that point. I wonder if that impacts um, their training at all. But hey, you never know. Game a good game is a good game. So let's see. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is this is another big one. We're back to the YK Construction Cup Game Twenty Two, Sinjin So. Uh, got got beat by Kim Myon Hun, but that's yes. that's that's not the biggest news. The biggest one is is he he basically stopped his winning streak, didn't he? Oh yeah. So Sinjin So was at an eighteen game win streak, which is nuts. Uh, yeah, that's that's a big one. Yeah. Um, it's not his longest, but oh, no. it it would it's def it was definitely the longest of anyone active. Yeah. By far, yeah. and um, it was it was hard to see when he was going to lose a game. But Kim Young Hoon is top ten in Korea. He was automatically selected for the Asian Games. Yeah team um i think he was automatically selected for the lg cup as well I'm, yeah. I'm i'm not sure about that but he he obviously has is held in high regard by the korean selectors yeah um and he has had a very good year he's only lost he'd only lost five games coming yeah. into this all year all year all right yeah yep um, but then again, Shinjin So had only lost four. <laughs> right, yeah. So it it seemed to be yeah two guys at the top of their game. Yeah, coming. And in. you also have to take into account again. I've I've mentioned this again and again, but this this tournament has a very weird time control. Yeah. And um, it seems like it seems like Shinjin So he should be the favorite every game, of course. But yeah. at these time at this particular time control he doesn't seem to be as dominant no um his most recent loss before this game was in the first round of yeah. this tournament against lee ji hyun yeah um and of course he almost lost against kim yun ji yeah um in this tournament yeah so he seemed a bit more vulnerable than usual yep yeah. and yeah, once again, there, there was definitely... If you watch the video, there's definitely a point in the game where Shinjin So, um, playing in the top left, um, realizes that his 
his reading, he he misread, realized yeah. that what he was setting out to do didn't work. Yeah. Um, whenever he, whenever that happens, he he sort of lightly taps the side of his head with his hand. Right. It's like imagine imagine you know, Corje slapping himself. Yeah. But ten times less aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, he he he'll do that. He'll. I've noticed that he does that when um, he makes a bad move, but even the AI says he's still winning. Right, right, right. So I think he's I think he's just a bit of a perfectionist, very hard on himself. But here you could definitely tell the point at which he'd realised that he had made a mistake. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that his plan wasn't going to work. Right. But full credit to Kim Young Hoon. Yeah. He. He read the he read the positions better than Shin Jin So. Yeah. Outplayed him. Yeah. Um yeah, it's any any time someone beats Shin Jin So at the form that he's in is an upset. Yeah. But this one is probably if if there was gonna be a Korean to beat him, it would be someone like Kim Young hoon Yeah. I mean, of course your Park Jun Hwan and Shin Min Jun and Park Jun Hwan, Byun Sang Il, Shin Min Jun are all um Always have a chance to beat him. Yeah. Um, but Kim Young Hoon, um, he he can he should he belongs right up there with yeah. those guys. He, they haven't actually played since 2018. The Kim Young Hoon and Shin Jin So that was right. the last time they played. Right. So um, it was good to see them play each other when they're both playing so well. Yeah. Um, you always want to see the the best of Baduk playing against each other. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a good game, yeah. Um, and yeah, well played by Kim Young Hoon. Yeah, so I, I believe Kim Young Hoon might might be born in nineteen ninety seven. So he would be about ninety seven. Um, I thought it was maybe ninety eight, but it was it was. Right. Um, wait, I, let I, me check. I I, I thought he was no. Born it in, is ninety seven. It's yeah, ninety seven. Yeah, I, I remember he was born in the same year as Kerje. So, but obviously he hasn't had the you know the same kind of career as Kerje, but. At twenty four, twenty five, that that seems like he's kind of like you know be, becoming kind of the strongest he'll ever be. Like he's that's that's kind of his, well. I'm yeah. just checking now. He actually didn't. He didn't turn pro until he was sixteen. Right. Yeah. Um. So he turned pro in twenty fourteen. That was the same year that Koje won his first right. international major. Right. Yeah. So. 16 is still obviously quite young. Yeah. But it's it's relatively older. Yeah. Um for someone who's now top 10 in Korea. Yes, yes. Um yeah, I I I I do remember just listening to the podcast of the Taiwanese uh, player who went to China to study. He it did say that if you're in a dojo and you are 16 and 17 you still haven't made pro, they kind of just give up on you. Um but hey, that's that's what that's Yeah, uh, no, well, it's it's good they didn't give up on this guy because yeah, he no. clearly Still, He's clearly got the goods. Yeah. Um, he all, yeah, he, he did have a very good... I remember he, he played Koje in the Chunlan Cup yeah. a few months earlier, and he had a very good position, but I think he's just spent too much time. Yeah. He, like, he was winning against Koje, but he used up all his time to get into that winning position, and then when he got to Bioyomi, he yeah. he just... He, he, couldn't, um, he couldn't withstand the Koje steamroller. <laughs> No, so I I do remember watching the game and and people were very nervous. Definitely the Chinese fans were very nervous because Kerje was like down in the twenty percent, like ten percent maybe. I, I I think it was near about twenty percent. So Kerje wasn't wasn't doing really well, and Kerje has been like exiting tournaments in the first round, and doing not so so great. So yeah, it, it was a nervous moment for the Chinese fans, but Kerje did pull through in the end. Yeah. But Kim, so Kim Ming Chun, uh, definitely very, very strong. And as you said, been selected for lots of, lots of uh, tournaments. Um, but I, I do want to just like mention one moment in the game, which I thought was when I looked at it was very weird. So basically, this is a moment in the game where Shin Jin So as black has kind of surrounded the the white um, stones, but the the surrounding stones also look very weak. The black stones. So what happened was, uh, Shin Jin So decides to invest one move. To make like the stone that was like only one stone into two stones, and when 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 Sim, uh, Kim Ming Shun cut, he invests another move, and then when Sim Min Jun makes another 
it makes another move like if it feels like if you follow the momentum he should just extend down and just invest one more move but at this point after investing two moves making his group heavy as he decides to play elsewhere and like maybe he just thought this extending down was not going to work based on his reading so he just let this three stone get captured so he invested three uh, two, uh, like two moves to make a group heavy and just let it go and I, I just thought this moment was really weird and when I checked the AI that that is that is the kind of the, the losing moment so yeah it's unfortunate for Sinjin so but yeah that was that that's that feels like a, a like a terrible misread from from Sinjin so or or like a or like a read that he just couldn't see how he could get out of a uh, situation so he just Gave, gave up on it basically so yeah. mm, interesting yeah. yeah that was a very interesting moment for me but anyway uh whatever uh sinjin so did lose this move and uh, did lose this game and uh i so do want to say i yeah. want to say one quick thing there there is a tournament that we will be discussing later on in this podcast yeah. and there there is a chance that shinjin so and kim young hoon may meet again, again very soon very soon yes um so let's let's let while we're on the topic of Sinjin So right let's and you mentioned he's got a few win streaks so now basically this is the all time win streaks um, top hundred so I I don't know some of these may not be correct just because it only counts games with Kifu on a particular website but but just look just look at this this, this is how many uh, win streaks Sinjin So has had this is the one that got ended at uh, eighteen but he's got right. like, supposedly nineteen. He's got a 16 game win streak and it's got a 13 game one so and a 12 game one so he's 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 on the top 100 many many times um, even if there are some inaccuracies in that in this table but like that's that's to me just nuts no it's it's very impressive and yeah it's it's he, he just seems to get every time it seems like every time he loses, he wins the next ten games. <laughs> yeah, no. So it's yeah. he's. I, I believe before losing his game, his his win rate was above ninety percent for the year. Yes, yeah. yeah. Not for his career. His career win rate win rate is about seventy seven percent. Yeah, which is which nice. is still yeah. extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary high. So yeah, there's some some picks on the game. Um, so yeah. that's Kim Myun Hyun. So we'll remember him. Yep. Sin Jin So. And they are the yep. two playing together. That's very good. Um, so a little bit of, a little bit uh, change of pace. 21st Taiwan Tianyuan final game three. Uh, Xu Hao Hong won by 2.5 points over Wang Yuan Jun. So Xu now leads the best of seven series 2-1. to one. Um I, I just I have one complaint about this. Yeah, what is what is the complaint? This was not live streamed. No. The Taiwan um, Wei Chi Federation have a YouTube channel. They do, yeah. And they didn't like, and they didn't have video for this one. Yeah, so I, I don't know how how they work. Like sometimes they they do, sometimes they they don't. Um, yeah, so so maybe one day we'll we'll do a like a like a special feature on the Taiwan Pro system, but. It, it seems a bit different, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So they didn't stream it. Um, but yeah, I was I was keen to to watch this one. Yeah. But then when they didn't have a live stream, I, I didn't even I didn't even follow the game. No. I, so I don't know I don't know how exciting the game was to be honest. Yeah. No. This is this is this also one game I didn't I didn't look over, but um. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it was a fairly interesting game considering that it went right down to the count. Yeah. So, two and a half. So and a, half, yeah. a bit a bit of a shame, but um maybe I'll maybe I'll follow game four. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, when they have a stream. Um that's that's also good. Uh I believe I believe this is actually the 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 location in which they played. So um it's a bit funny because it's just in a room it's got this banner it's printed it's probably not done by a proper graphics designer i don't know maybe it is and this one i mean it's a nice looking board nice looking bowl nice yeah. looking stones that's yeah. all you really need yeah um i guess so um 
And this gets printed, yeah, but anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's just printed on paper. <laughs> yeah, it's just printed on paper, but hey, that, that's, that's, but that's Taiwan. Taiwan is Taiwan. Um, we on to another a bit off 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 the beaten, beat normal beaten track. Shinjin Souls LG Cup Victory release it as an F NFT. Yeah, this one was this is this is weird. Yeah, um, yeah. I think many many people are aware. Well, if they're not, we'll discuss it now. Many people are aware that um, Lee Se Doll had yeah. a famous victory in a single game against AlphaGo. Yeah. Um, the only time that AlphaGo lost to a human. Um, and because of its, you know, importance, that, that, that one was really, that was released as an NFT a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, and that sort of, that seemed, I remember at the time that it just seemed like a curious novelty. I'm like, yeah, sure. That's that's pretty that's pretty interesting. You know, the the novelty of it seemed to legitimize releasing that as an NFT. I I yeah. don't understand releasing this as an NFT. Uh, I I I have to say I'm not really familiar. I'm not. I don't really understand NFTs all that well. They seem a little bit frivolous. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit pointless, yeah. and it's 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 really hard to know what their the actual value is. Right in these things but yeah they the um the kba have decided that they're going to do it again yeah and release shinjin so's lg cup victory as yeah. an nft I, I think i'm not sure if it's specifically game one because game one was the the one that had that epic comeback yeah from from like 99.5 percent yeah, I mean, if you you see the image there, it it is it is an image of game one. Yes, that is game one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, I I have to say I'm a bit ignorant as to what NFT actually is, but it does sound like it's it's like a it's almost like a digital collectible that you can just prove mathematically that you own. But does anyone care you own it? I'm not sure. Yeah, but you don't actually own the game; you just own the collectible or something yeah, something yeah no no but, idea. Uh, but something something else that i found funny is the the source article which is in korean yeah. mentions it mentions lee say dolls nft but it also mentions that madonna recently released an nft right and um i would suggest that you don't search that on google it's it's or well, certainly not at work <laughs> right so it's got an ns nw Yes, not totally. safe for work. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Madonna's NFT. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing uh, off screen. Uh, <laughs> I'll enjoy that while we talk about this podcast. So thank you very much. Uh, let's move on. Uh, OMG, the four nominees for the 2021 Korean League MVP. Uh, would you Would you like to do the honors, Gaza? Yes. Yes. So there, the Korean League just finished we've discussed this every podcast yeah. um mostly we were discussing shinjin so's epic uh perfect performance and Celtrion's cinderella story coming yeah. all the way from sixth to make the grand final yeah um before ultimately falling short to hapchon yeah it turns out that there are four players nominated for mvp yeah and it that is obviously shinjin so yeah. but also Park Chun Hwan, Park Young Hoon, and Park Jong Hoon. Yeah. And initially, when I heard this, I was very confused. Um, right. Because, because as I was saying, Shin Jin So has won twenty-seven games. Yeah. The next, the next two combined yeah. have won twenty-seven games. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, no. That's why? Not, why? Yeah, why, that's, yeah. why would anyone else get nominated apart from Shin Jin So? As yeah. it turns out, the nomination process is based on strict criteria it's not right. they're not they're not nominated it's all objective yeah it's an objective process yeah. so basically to be nominated for mvp you yeah. have to be one of the players in the grand final teams yeah and you have to have played 10 games combined yeah 
and have won at least 60% of those games. Right. So Park Jun Wan, Park Young Hoon, and Park Jong Hoon, they all played for Hapchon, who won the tournament, yeah. who won the league, and all of them recorded a 60% or better win rate yeah. across the regular season and postseason combined. Yeah. And so um, they were automatically nominated for MVP. Yeah. Right. So, you know, uh, this is this is very, very interesting. So I, I have no doubt who's going to win the MVP. But it, it does sound odd to me that uh, if Shin Jin So had won every single one of his games, but his team teammates were complete garbage and they didn't make the final, then he wouldn't even be nominated. That's right. If, if say, for instance, yeah. um, they lost to Team Posco yeah. in the final preliminary, yeah. 2-1. Yeah. So Shin Jin So could have gotten to um, 26 wins, I think. Yeah. Um, no, no, he could have gotten the 25 wins. Yeah. Right. Um, assuming he won all of his games, right? He yeah, could have gotten yeah. the 25 wins and zero losses. Yeah. And he wouldn't have even been nominated. Yeah. Yeah, so that, yeah, I mean, it's a team-based it's, comp, but, you know. Yeah, it's all. what's also crazy is, so last year, yeah. there were only two players nominated. Right. Won Song Jin... And Shin Jin So, and so, and that ended up being because they were the only two players from Celtrion who um, had a sixty percent win streak, yeah. uh, win rate. Yeah. Sorry, and the runner-up team—I don't recall who it was—but none of them had sixty percent win percentage. All of them were like fifty-five to fifty-nine percent. Right. So it makes you wonder. It's certainly possible for both teams. Like it's extremely unlikely, but it's yeah. certainly possible for both teams to have no one yeah. at sixty percent. Yeah. In that case, is there going to be no MVP? Well, I imagine so. I mean, that's it only makes sense. But I, I, I really want to see that scenario. To be yeah. honest, just, just for, ca- for chaos. Yes. <laughs> Let, let's hope we see that. I mean, you, you predicted chaos before, and I, I put, I poured cold water over it. <laughs> and the nuclear nuclear reaction happened, and it turned the wind turbine. So, uh, God knows what's going on. We're talking about the Korean strongest. Yeah, we're Korean talking about the Korean league. strongest league. So, 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 so of, of course, the story was that uh, you you mentioned there would be a three way tie, and there would be like a papers rock scissors situation in terms of the head to head. So nobody knows who gets relegated, right? And I was like, oh yeah, 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 that's that's gonna happen, <laughs> and it happened. <laughs> so yeah, so. Uh, so never, but, never say never. Yeah. I, I do want to see a, a situation, you know, that that you've described, uh, where that that you know no one gets over sixty percent happens, and, and see what happens. So I mean, no, no one, yeah, no one who makes the final gets over sixty percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, I mean, yeah, in this case, yeah. So so a couple of other things. Um, the vote is is split. Fifty percent is from Go reporters. Yeah. So basically, media, and fifty percent is from fans. Yeah. And there's a li- there's actually a link in the um in the post to yeah. where you can vote as a fan. I I did it. I'm not sure if it counted. Yeah. Um, but oh. it did say thank you for it, it. They did say thank you for your vote. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So there you go. You can just click on one and then yeah. vote. Puck Puck Jun Hoon it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. There you go. That's my and- that's my contribution. <laughs> And um, fin- and finally, if Shin Jin So does win, as he's expected to, it would be the first time the MVP is awarded to a player from the losing team. Yeah. And 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 no one would really say anything about that. They would just be like, yeah. We'll oh no, no one. Everyone everyone is expecting Shin Jin So to be MVP. I think it. I think people would be. Few. I think there would be an uproar if if it went to like Park Young Hoon or something like that. Yeah. All right, so let's let's move on. Yeah, that, that's not going to be announced until the first week of June. I mean, the eighth of June. Eighth so. of June, the second week. Yeah, so, yeah, so we've got some time. Yeah, so yeah, let's let's watch and wait wait and see. Um, but yeah, un- un- unfortunately, I believe um, uh, maybe let's see. Yeah, Wen Sonjin, 
had another game in game 23 in the YK Construction Cup versus Lee Jit Hoon. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and uh, um, so the previous day, Shinjin So's winning streak was stopped. Yep. So would today, would Won Son Jin's losing streak be stopped? Well, before this game, Won Son Jin was on eight games losing streak. Eight, but, uh, eight games. Eight games, but uh, no, no. So Won decides to extend his winning streak to nine. So that's, his losing that's, streak. Yeah, losing streak to nine. Uh, his negative winning streak to, to nine. So... So there, so he's he's sitting on one win out of five uh, in the league. Yeah, he's he, he's not going to make the top two. No, he's he's got zero chance basically. And Lee Jit Hoon uh, only recorded his second win in the league. His first, of course, was against uh, Sin Jin So. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's so, that's two big wins. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the, it's kind of a bit inconsequential their game. Because they're kind of in the bottom half of the table. I, I don't. I don't think that Lee Jae Hyun is going to make yeah. the top two either. No. No. So. So therefore, this is purely for 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 rubbing salt into yeah. uh, wounds. Uh, uh, wounds. Uh, you know, just because his his nine game losing streak. But uh, yeah, that's that's what he's it is. really struggling. Yeah, it's not, and he's in the top ten. In uh, he might be top top five in Korea at the moment. Uh, he's not quite the top five. He top is in the top ten though. Yeah, is it, is it six or something? Six maybe. Um, six. I'm checking now. He is six. Yes. Yeah, yeah so. he's actually he's actually only just outside the top five. Yeah, he's yeah. six. So yeah, but that's not going. He's not going to be six come the June ring. Oh so yeah, well let, let, let's let's see. I mean nine 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 games straight. So that's yeah. He he might just drop off out of the top ten. Um, we have we have another league uh that's running concurrently to the. YK Construction League. That is the. Wait Korea... a sec. We missed the. Yeah, we missed the first game there. The oh, uh, the first game was. Um, yeah, there was yes. a game that was played on. Right. Um, Monday. Yes. Oh, yes. We okay. We we missed one game, and that game. So basically, the third, uh, the Korea's uh, strongest league. That 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 league, if you recall, that was. With three players tied on um, on the same number of wins, and uh, we couldn't de determine who actually comes fifth out of those three players. And of course, if you come fifth, you get relegated. So they decided to make a playoff, and and the first game of the playoff. Uh, okay, anyway, the three players that were on the same number of wins were Lee Chang Seok, Park Jun Hwan, and Kang Dong Yun. Now, of course, Park was a little bit of a surprise because you really don't don't want to see. You would you would have expected him to win the league outright, right? Yes, because because Sin Jin So is not in the league, right? Yes, but he 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 was tied for th uh, th third, third to fifth, yeah, third, fourth, and fifth, yeah. Yeah, so he's tied for third, fourth, and fifth. So he had to play in this uh, playoff, but in, but he 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 has two bite in the cherry. Uh, so he in the first game he won against Lee, and Lee has to play a game with Kang. And the loser of which will just get relegated. So Kang. That's right. This is this is to determine who has to re-qualify. Yeah. The winner will be seeded into next year's Korea Strongest Tournament, while the yeah. loser has to re-qualify. Yeah. And uh, even though Kang was leading the YK Construction Cup, he was not so lucky in uh, in this comp. No, this was a this was a good game. Yeah. By Lee Chang Suk. Um, it all depended on he. He had this. He had a group in the middle. Yeah. That, that sort of invaded White's massive moyo, and the result of the game depended on that group living. Yeah. Um, if that group lived, then Black had too many points, and obviously, if it died, then you know Black just was com behind by a lot. Yes. So uh, I I do feel that they have stopped the game a bit a bit early um so so when they stop i i actually took me a little bit of time to figure out how they were how they were all gonna live but, yes um, this yeah this is something that um especially when it's something like a capturing race or or a or a liberty fight like this yeah the, the professionals will often resign before an amateur would someone like me or certainly someone like me a very weak amateur yeah. um and and that's that's something that you know. I I would prefer to see the professionals play it out um, for the educational value. 
Yeah. But fortunate, like fortunately, you do. It is not that hard to get yeah. create. You know, get your own version of Cardigo running. Yeah. And you can play out the variations yourself. Yeah. And like when it's when it's something like this where it's a capturing race or yeah. a fight for life. Yeah. And um, the AI can be quite instructive. Yeah. Um Yeah, I, I, I didn't check I didn't check the AI on this one, but I I, I was just playing this out as a puzzle. I, I was purely trying to go go down the route of uh just purely living. Oh yeah, yeah. And... I think yeah, for an for, for for when you're trying to improve yourself, it's definitely better to to play through the position without AI. Yeah. But if if you're just looking if you're just trying to understand why a player lost and, and you don't want to invest you don't want to you know treat it like a a life and death problem you, you just want to know the answer yeah. then then the ai can be very useful in that case yes sure and i i, I was going to make the point that i i eventually went through it and i found uh, that you know no matter how white uh you know plays black can live so i just play through two variations where where that can happen but when I looked at the game, I, I thought uh, like, like white is a little bit not so thick on the outside as well. So potentially AI would suggest something like breakthrough from here instead of just purely living, which was what I was going for. So, uh, but anyway, it's like no matter what happens, either black can break through or black can just live straight because, um, so yeah, um, that's how and the game was really short as well, 117 moves. So Yeah, it was, a, it was a quite a short game, yeah. yeah. But, um, but, but, but yeah, yeah, but but by that point of the game, once White had decided that Black can't be killed, yeah, there 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 is there's no hope for yeah. White because there's just not enough points on the board. Yeah, yeah. So so White just re- resigned, and it, to me, at, at my level, that it's definitely a really nice puzzle to work through. Um, yeah, just to work out how he can just live unconditionally. Yeah, so, yeah, very very yeah. interesting. So. Um, uh, yeah, so one not- notable thing is that Park Jun Wan lost to Lee Chang Suk in the league, but then beat him in this playoff. Yeah. And Lee Chang Suk lost to Kang Dong Yoon in the league, but beat him yeah. in the playoff. So all, all in all, it's just pure bad luck for Kang. It's it's very bad luck for Kang Dong Yoon because, yeah, like, like you said, Lee Chang Suk did lose the first game of the playoff, but he got a second chance. Yeah. Whereas Kang Dong Yoon only had one shot and yeah. and so, he blew it. So yeah. Oh well, it's life. Um, so, um, so that that kind of basically concludes everything about the third Korea Strongest League, except for the title challenge now. So except for the title challenge, which yes. will start the beginning of June. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, really hoping that Shin Min Jun can uh, pull off another killing giant killing uh, effort. Uh, but onto the onto the 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 Chinese national team preparation leagues they're happening in Chuzhou. This is there. These are some of the pictures of the players. Uh, it's very interesting because they they decided that um, to pair up the four players that were gonna play in the Asian Games, the Asian Games squad, the women players. The, there's four that that made the Asian Games squad. They decided they were gonna put the female players into this uh, big Swiss tournament together with the men. Uh, the male players so so they get um some really quality training time and this is a game between lu ming Chen and xie ke uh, i think so that's a great idea by the yeah, way yeah well i mean the chinese players of uh, women players of the past were shall, shall we say uh, considered much stronger than the than the current gen for example and that the, and training with the, the the man player might have something to do with it because uh, rain i Wei, uh, you know, of the past, they they were they were very strong players in their own right, like men men or women. So this is Yuji Ying, I think I believe plays, but unfortunately the the women the four players they all lo- all lost their first game. Um, but hey, so Ding Hao, now Ding Hao had a really disappointing Asian Games qualification tournament. Out of nine games, he won one, so he's and, got a one. And, and where did, where was that tournament played? Chuzhou. So they're, they're, he's coming back to it, but uh, good face for, his demons. Yeah, face his demons, but but good on thing. He actually won his first game against a very strong opponent, goes to how as well. So now another thing, curious thing about this tournament was that they released the results of the first day, where Kerje lost to Lian Xiao as well, but after that they haven't released 
a single result. So I have absolutely can, no idea what happened after the first day. Can can you can you um go back to the second picture? P second picture, yeah. 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 Look look at that. It's like uh, twins. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, or at least at least they go to the same barber. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Like uh, this Li Ching Cheng and Xia Hao. And yes. Even if, yeah. So, uh, I think yeah. I, I, I probably couldn't pick them apart probably, but but anyway, we'll, we'll probably explain the the league system uh, a little bit. It's a very to me, it's a very interesting setup, right? They, so they got three leagues running concurrently. Right. Uh, the first one is what they call the LG Cup Preparation League. So if you record, there's seven players who made the LG Cup for uh, 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 uh for uh, Chinese players, but what they did was they added. They selected another three players from the ratings. I believe they just selected the top three from the ratings to make 10 player league. And these 10 players are going to play in a, in a round robin league. So 45 games or up. So it's going to be high, high quality competition. There. Good. And Good. this, this league is played using LG cup rules for obvious reasons. Right. So the whole, Oh, okay. So that's, that's three hour games. Yeah. So, and, and the Bayomi is 40 seconds per, per, per uh, Bayomi. Okay. So, so that's that's uh, that's the LG Cup. Uh, Wait, LG Cup. are you yeah. sure the LG? I, I'm sure the LG Cup was three hours, not two hours. Uh, I I'm not sure. I, I just transcribed it from the article. What is okay? Said. Yeah, but maybe yeah. I'm not. I can't. I can't. Maybe remember. maybe we'll we'll see when the LG Cup starts. What, yeah. the, what yeah. the actual? Well, cup. whatever the timing was, it's it's meant to follow the LG Cup rule. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, you want to say something? Nope. Okay. And. The, the league started on the 17th of May, so it's been going on for three, three four days. And it's like, uh, yeah, basically one round a day except Sunday. So they only get, they only get one rest day. And if the, if the league overlaps with like proper like competitions, then it stops for the, on those days. So, uh, so that's the LG Cup, uh, LG Cup League. They also yeah. have a Swiss-like league. So I, I call it Swiss-like because I'm not actually sure if it's actually a Swiss system. But it does sound like it might just be, and what they have is they just took they selected sixteen male players outside of this uh, LG Cup league. So basically, uh, the top 10, 10 players was in the LG Cup, and they select the next sixteen based on their ratings points, I believe, uh, or some other criteria. Wait, I, I, so I there's no that. overlap here? No, there's no overlap. But you've got Fenting Yu in there. <gasps> oh. Yeah. So okay, I, I tell you the story of this one because in the in the announcement article, uh, they said it's going to be a ten person league, but the last person wasn't even a proper person's name. It it basically is the name of two person combined. One of them is Fan, and the other one is Xie Ke. So I don't know if it's because if one is in competition, they will swap out the other guy, or what's the what's the story? But uh, I I couldn't figure it out, and yeah, so that's why I put it there. Uh, hopefully I'll get better better info and I can fix that up. Uh, no worries, no yeah. worries. So there's a mystery tenth player in that yeah, one. Yeah, it's uh, I, I I couldn't I couldn't figure out exactly what what was going on there, so that's why. Never uh, mind. Yeah, never mind, never mind. Um, we'll, we'll figure the, the, it out. The more important yeah. one, the more important question in this Swiss tournament. Yeah. Is Wang Zhenghao in it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I believe he he was and and two as well. There he is. There he, there he is. There he is. Nice. So they might just selected players based on some criteria because Wang wouldn't be in the top twenty six, uh, in China. Um, he's he's like ranked thirty fourth or something, some something like that. Okay, so is your let, friend is your friend Yang Kai Wen in this? Uh, that's a good question. I actually don't remember. I don't um, see him there. No wonder he's complaining. Oh yeah, he's not there. Unfortunately, didn't get selected somehow. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to show you what what I'm talking about. So this is the list of the LG Cup League. You see, it's got ten player names here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And the last one was in brackets, and it's not a proper person's name. It's the surname of two person. The first one is Fan. The second one is Xie. So I I thought it was Fan Ting Yu, but maybe it's they kind of swap it out. If one person is in competition. They will swap one of them in, so it might be Xie or oh, Fan. Okay. So that's that's a bit of a mystery. So maybe if someone knows, they can tell me what's happening. Uh, but right, also, yeah, maybe maybe they maybe yeah. they rotate, they tag team. And... Yeah, may, maybe, and that's where where I got confused. But anyway, 
it doesn't matter. It's going to be a ten-person league, and but uh, yeah, but this so this Swiss tournament includes Yu Ying, Zhou yeah. Hongyu, Li He, and Lu Ming Chuan. Yeah, so these are the Asian game squad for for China, mm -hmm. yeah, and they will be in a, in a Swiss tournament. But uh, yeah, as I mentioned, they all lost their first game. Uh, but that's going to be like a a pairing, and this league is very interesting because it's like in the morning it's three in the morning the game is no main time, but in three. A uh, thirty-second uh, Biomi. Wow, that's and, fast. Yeah, that's fast. And I think the the concept was that this will train them in the in the Biomi situation. Like it's kind of intense. Also because it's it's in the morning, they don't have that much time. So you know, you want to finish the game in one or two hours and go to lunch. Um, in the afternoon, it's going to be one hour games main time plus uh, sixty-second Biomi one. Right, one that's hour. that's Nongshim Cup. Right. One so they, they might be trying to prepare for the, also the the Ho, uh, Hoban uh, Cup. Hoban so Cup, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, that's, yeah, so that's two rounds a day, except for the first day. And of course, Sunday is the rest day. And same thing, uh, they did put a note there saying, if some players are occupied with real competition, they will be replaced by women players. So I, I, I imagine if some of these players play in a real competition, so they can't participate in this Swiss-like Swiss league, they will go to the next Yeah, league, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, they go to the next women's league and just pick someone from there. So, but anyway, this is the women's league. Curiously, they listed the four women players that were in the in the top league as well in here. So I, I don't know what's happened, but they also picked Reina Wei, Fan Roshi, Tang Jiawen, Li Xiaoxi, Wu Yiming, Wu Yiming. That's another uh, Wang Shuang, Wang Chun, Chu Xuan, and Han Zhou Ran. So some no, of these players, some no of these Wang players, hey, no no who, no Wang Chengzin. Uh, no, 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 no. She's missing for some reason. Mm. Not hundred percent sure why, but um, yeah, she is a strong, strong player. And some of these players might just be very young. And on the on the on the release uh, a schedule, they say that some of these women play mostly online. So actually, some of them were actually not in Chuzhou. They are somewhere else. But but I guess wait. They, so so they're actually they they they're not going to be playing these games in person. That some of these players or some of these players, like like four of them, were are not actually in Chuzhou. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I don't know why that is. Maybe because there's like a you know uh, person limit, some something or or rather uh, or whatever it may be. But um, yeah. But anyway, uh, that's that's the roughly the league setup. I know. Some some of the details may not be hundred percent there. I'm gonna upvote this post just because. Um, but yeah, that's as as good as info I got. And and as I mentioned, we have the first day results. I didn't bother typing them all out because that's that's a lot of game. But I just picked out some of the ones that I thought was interesting. So in the first day, Yang Dingxin beat Fenting Yu. So Fenting Yu couldn't really continue his great form. Uh, the the qualif qualification for Asian Games. He and making well, I mean, finals. Yeah, it's I mean that that was like uh, quite a few weeks ago now. <laughs> so right. yeah, yeah, no, they've been away a few weeks. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So so yeah, got got beat. But um, well, of course, fan fan also made the final of the Lanka Cup right after the Asian Game qualifier. So that's right. Yeah, so so he got beat. Uh, uh Kluge lost to Lian Xiao first round. Uh, Xu Yue lost to Zhao Chen Yu. Li He lost to Tor, Jia Xi. Huang Yin Song beat. Yu Zhiying, Peng Yao lost to Tu Xiaoyu. So Tu Xiaoyu, of course, is a very young player. Gu mm -hmm. Zihao lost to Ding Hao. Zhou Hongyu lost to Tang Weixin. And Tan Xiao lost to Wang Xinghao. Uh, so this, yeah, Wang Xinghao, of course, is another promising young player. But, um, yeah, is, is Li Chuan Hao in this? Uh, according to the notes, he and Mi Yu Ting were supposed to be in a game. But they were the game didn't take place because of um, delays in in their travel. So they they uh, okay. Work. Yeah, but as I mentioned, after the first game, I, they haven't released the results of the subsequent games. So I don't know what happened. So, Hopefully they do. Yeah, I, I do want to find out even even if there's no Kifu. Um, but hey, you never know. Maybe they just maybe it will never happen. But I, all right, I definitely want to see results. Yeah. Um, stay staying in China. We got Guli, uh, featuring in a in a kind of tourism promo for his hometown. Um, so this is Guli over here. Uh, it's it's good to see that uh you know famous Beijing players getting a getting their, their 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 time in the in the in the spotlight a little bit. 
uh, so and we have some pictures of Guli uh, and nice. of course this is this is Koje I believe he's just like the, the spokesperson or something for one of the bottled water brands in his in his home province so that's that's a poster of um, Koje oh fresh water yeah yeah oh it, it, it actually says save water starts from me so I, I don't know Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Like, like environmental message. Um, some more pictures of Kojig. Three Green. legends. Three Neil way Ping. legends there. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the um, CEO of Google currently, Sundai Pichai, I think. All right, so that's 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 a bit of Guli. Oh, yes. And we're staying in China, and we want to talk about the King of Kings. So together, can you have you heard of this King of Kings tournament before? Uh, no, not really, no. No. Yeah, so this this is a bit of a, a interesting one because it's called King of Kings for the reason that in order to participate, you have to have won a domestic title or international title or international or domestic competition to 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 qualify for this tournament. So that's why it's called ah, King of Kings. You have to be a king. Yeah, um, of course, in China and in Japan, if you win a title, they call like you're, you're crowned the king. But that's why. Uh, Xu Hao Hong is like a five crown king, and uh, Yama Yuta is like, I believe four, three, three he's, crowns. He's, he's got four. Yeah, four crown, and yeah, whatever that may be. So yeah, um, so, and uh, basically, it's it's got fairly decent and big prize money as well. But uh, he he are here are the eight participants, and I try to kind of indicate what basically qualify them for the tournament. So you uh, have to you have to have won a title since the last King of Kings, or yes, what? yes, or you were the winner of the last King of Kings. Okay. So I I know I know those criteria, and the last King of Kings was, uh, I believe uh, it, it happened in October twenty twenty. So if you have won a title international or domestic since then, you basically qualify for this tournament. I, I'm not sure if they actually wait until exactly eight players have qualified and they start the tournament or what it is, but. It's kind of curious to me that that um, exactly eight players are there and they they, they start this tournament. And right. last time it happened in October, this time in May. So I, I don't know. Sounds a bit odd to me. But anyway, uh, I I don't really remember if Kerje won a, won anything between twenty twenty two and twenty 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 one twenty twenty two. Well, surely, surely he's won something. Yeah, I think he might have won the no, CCTV. Like, yeah, Cup. CCTV Cup. Yeah, he might have won the uh, Chi Sun. So that's the same equivalent of Kisei. Yeah, but I just, when I wrote this, I just couldn't remember. But yeah, he, he definitely won something uh, in between those two dates. Uh, and of course, you got Gu Zihao, who won the two I remember anyway is Tian Yuan and Ahan Tongshan Cup. So that's the Aegon Cup. Yes, yeah, I remember. I knew he was the Aegon Cup champion because right. he played the match against Xu Xiaowan. Right, right, yeah. Um, okay, so that, that's at least two that I could remember. And Yang Dingxing, of course, also won the Tian Yuan. So, so basically, because two years has happened, so Yang Dingxin won the f- the first Tian Yuan after the last King of Kings, and then Gu Zihao beat Yang Dingxin the very next year. Um, right. So, so that's why there's two Tian Yuan winners. And Yang won the Xin Yang Wang, so that's Southwest King. That's a fast competition. Um, we got Fenting Yu. I Fenting Yu is a tough one. I I I couldn't figure out what he's won. Maybe maybe they counted the Asian game selection, uh, and which which he, he won, maybe. But I couldn't find any other competition that Fan has won, uh, in during that two year period. So okay, uh, yeah, Mi Yu Ting won the of course the M Lily Cup international competition. This yes. that, that's China's only international competition winner in that period, and uh, he also won the Wu Xi Wei Ru Fang Kai Cup. So that's. That's I, I really don't know what way you fun Kai is. It sounds like a company name, uh, so I'm not sure. But definitely, it's it's a real competition. So um, me and me won that. Li Xuanhao, of course, won the most recent Lanka Cup. Amazing. And uh, Ding Hao was a big, big, uh, big player. So he won the Da Qi Shi. That's the Wen Chu uh, uh, or Bay Area Cup. So well, Da Qi Shi translates to big player. Just just the same. Yeah. He of course won the Chang Chang Ki Cup. He also won the Guo Show. So he he's got three big domestic titles, but uh one 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 
out of nine in Asian game qualifiers. Yeah. And of course, Xu Jiayang won the last Lanka Cup. The the last year's Lanka Cup. Yeah, last year's Lanka Cup. So. Um, Noted, so that, I, I just so notably, I'm guessing that these titles have to be in open competition because otherwise, you know, Wang Jinghao won the Globus Club Cup. Right. But that's an under twenty comp, so I guess that one doesn't count. Yeah, I, I I'm not really sure what the rules are, but yeah, that that does sound like it's plausible. It, it would it would make sense that restricted yeah. comps aren't yeah. aren't considered. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise you might have um YouTube in, in here or yeah. something. Yeah, so that that makes sense to me. It's gonna happen right before the LG Cup. So this is crazy. Oh wow! Yeah, right this before month. The LG. Yeah. It's next week. It is. Um, so the Chinese Weichi Association has a habit of announcing things out of the blue. This doesn't feel very planned, but hey, maybe they've, they've been planning this for months. I don't know. Uh, it's going to happen in Shenzhou, in Zhejiang. I honestly have not heard of this city, but apparently it's very common in China to name the competition after a place. And it's usually sponsored by that place, uh, local government for some reason. Um, but anyway, so that's... So, so I think the official name is like Shengzhou Cup, King of Kings, uh, because it's happening in this city. Uh, but that's that's all I know about it. And it's single elimination. Uh, all the games count for ratings points. Uh, and and the prize money is a, a, a like quite that's big. a huge prize yeah, money. Like prize money, but even though there's only eight players, so there's so that's not, not much to in go Australian, around. In Australian in Australian money, I think that's two hundred thousand dollars for yeah. the winner. That's that's easily like easily would put you in the top like one or two percent in australia in terms of income if you just win that like just, just yeah that's like it's a lot it's a lot and that's, even if you come second yeah. you make you make like that that much which, that's more than the chunlan cup yeah so you now this is this is the king of kings remember so this is meant to be very prestigious um so yeah even if you elect it in the first round you still get fifty thousand renminbi um so that's that's pretty decent um so yeah, so that's the King of Kings. I'm looking forward to this tournament. I, I because the the field is just so strong. And of course it's King of Kings, so what, what can what else can you say? So yes. it happened just before LG Cup. Um so let's let's see. Um uh, no no predictions yet, the draw's not out, so I'll do that. Uh, and we have another two games in the YK construction cup. Yep. Neither of these games were um, broadcast on Baduk TV. Right. Um, but that was because there were other games on that day. Right. Um, but these were important games because um, one of them involved Park Chun Huang. Yep. And, and one Kang. of them involved Kang Dong Yoon. Yeah. Um, so Park won and Kang won. So what what that means is uh, we, we, we have Kang on five out of five. And he's poised to win the league. Um, he's looking very good to make the final. Yeah. 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 And, uh, oh, yeah. I think you only have to be in the top two to, uh, to, to, to be. I believe it's a best of th- three, if I remember correctly. Um, um, the final, I think, is a best of five. Oh, it's a best of five. Okay. But, yes, the top two in the league make the final. So, yeah. Kang Dong Yoon is leading the league with five wins. So, he's, yeah. he's obviously plays very well and he's the only undefeated yeah he's the only player with five wins everyone's played the same number of games now right and we we've just crossed the halfway point of the league yeah so um i mean technically yeah. it's a bit over a little bit over the halfway point isn't it yeah yeah we've yeah we've sort of just crossed the halfway point yeah yeah um and yeah it's very competitive you've got Kang dong yoon on five, yeah. Park Chun Wan and Kim Yong Hoon on four, yeah. and you can't forget Shin Jin So on on, th- um, on three. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's got two losses, but you you wouldn't you wouldn't put it past him to just win every game from here on out. I mean, yeah, it's it's often ex- almost expected of him. Yeah, so he he could he could still power through, but it, I, according to the simulation, he does have a slim chance of winning, like only nine percent. But he's still got a very decent chance of coming second, so that that might be what he's going yeah. for. Yeah, and and winning, yeah, winning or coming second is in in the league itself doesn't make any difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's all about it's all about just finishing in the, in the top two, and then and then it's the final. Ex- exactly. Um, 
but uh, this this is this surprised me because Sin Jin So does have a terrible um, some of the defeated opponents score at the moment. But hey, well uh, he he hasn't played um, Park Chun Wan or Kangong Yun yet. Right, so he could he could just uh, steamroll those two and uh, and have a massive. Well, yeah, but I mean it it also means that he could. Um... He's, he, he's got relatively tough opponents still, so... Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's, he's he's got less less than 50% chance of coming top yeah, two. But Whatever whatever happens, I mean, any any those games will definitely be worth watching. Yeah, so I'll definitely be following that, uh, especially if it's made for TV, so it's kind of good. All right, so that's that's YK Construction Cup, and uh, we'll... we'll, we'll We'll look at some of these pictures, but but uh, it's not a mystery anymore because the little girl on yeah. the left that we have shown here, it's basically from seven years ago. We're looking at the pictures of Kim Yun Ji and Kim Ji Sok, but this is, I believe, like seven years ago. So Kim Yun Ji would be like ten years old or something back Kim, then. Kim Yun Ji is like um, fifteen now. Oh, so, so seven? Is, it, is she eight? What? It's Apparently, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it's not from seven years ago. Maybe it's been long. Uh, sh yeah, not more, more recent. But anyway, uh, we'll we'll see more pictures of her. And now in Taiwan, there's another title happening, and no surprise there. Xu Hao Hong is also involved. Uh, they play a best of five. A uh, Xu Hao Hong versus Chen Chi Rei. So and what's this, the title called? This is the uh, Xi Duan. So Shi Duan is the same as uh, Judan in Japan, right? And uh, it's a best of five. So it's between Shi Hao Hong and Chen Chi Rei. And Chen this Chi was game number two. This is game number two, and Shi Hao Hong has gone two zero. Uh, of course, Chen yep. Chi Rei is a strong young player from from Taiwan, up, up and coming, but Shu seems to be just too strong for uh, for Chen at the moment. Um, yep. Yeah. So that's that's that. I, I watched the game. Um, yeah. yeah, nothing, nothing to comment on. Nothing. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't. I don't remember watching this one in particular. But yeah. Yeah. This one. This one actually was um, streamed. Right. Live streamed. So. That's good. Yeah. yeah um, always in favor of live streams. Yeah. No. We, well, definitely the the, the the Chinese should should give her a try. Um, <laughs> so this we want to a little bit of a the second. Transatlantic League. This is the league that's that's between um, Europe and North America. Um, so you got some oh, North no. American players playing. So they've got all they've got all six yeah. all six countries represented this week. Right, and one one of the countries shall remain unnamed for obvious reasons. Um, oh, by countries I mean Europe as a country. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. I mean yes. we've got Japan, Korea, China, Taiwan, yeah. Europe. Yeah. And North America. Yeah, um, they're, they're more like re regions. It's it's very controversial. Regions. To call them countries is very controversial for three of them. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, but another notable thing is that these these were the only professional games that happened over the weekend. Yes. So so you know this it's it's a bit of a, a habit of mine. So if if I look at if I look at the the pro calendar on on Pro Weichi, and if I see like an empty like a day with no mine competition. Showing, mine showing that pro calendar. Yeah, I, that's. Uh, yep, I'm gonna bring bring that up. Like yep. this is this is what it looks like to me. This so every day's got something on, and if I see one day that doesn't have anything, I'll I'll, I'll you know my I'll, I'll start agitating, you know I'll start <laughs> looking for, uh, I'll go to all the websites and try to figure out what actually is on that day, and and it just so happens that they decided to cancel, the uh, Wu Qingyuan Cup for for that weekend. So there was nothing on my calendar, and to the rescue was Transatlantic Cup. So that happens over the weekend. I believe they play both days, if I remember correctly. They did. They do. They do play both days. Yes. Yeah. So that that's what what fill in the calendar. Otherwise, it would have been empty those two days, which is sad. Uh, so yeah. So that that saved the day. So and, and so what happened? So I've noticed that Ryan Lee has finally played some games. Yes. Yeah. Of course, Ryan Lee won the league last time very convincingly, I would say, and he's he's featured again. He he won the best of three. I believe every match 
uh, it's a best of three, and the time controls are pretty quick as well. I, I don't remember what it, what it was. But Did they play all three games on the same day? I believe so, because it's a very quick time control. Let me let me see if I can find out what exactly is the time control, but I do right. remember it being very, very fast. Okay, this is this is the time control. Five minutes basic time, and three basics, uh, three periods of 30 seconds per move per Yomi. Right, so that's very fast. So they, they, could, they could squeeze in three games in, in one evening, probably. And uh, so in the first game, Ryan Lee actually lost to Ali Jabarin, um, yep. a pro from Israel. But he powered through in the next two games. He won the next two. So he got a score of one. Uh, that just I think uh, one a score just means that you have won one match. Um, that's the best of three. So, right. So that and, puts him third in his group now. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So, I mean, it's of course not very played out at the moment. But yeah, I, I, I can't expect Ryan to top the group and uh, and see and see how we go because Ryan did very well in international tournaments as well. So uh, but but, I, yeah, but the, the two mo- most notable things for me are, are Brady Zhang. Yeah. Still, he's won. He's got two match points, and Kevin Yang in yeah. Group B. Yeah. Two match points, so they're, they're, I'm keeping my eye on both of them. Yeah. So and and of course the North American uh, Pro Qualification Tournament is coming up. So these two might become pros i'm not sure if they are involved in that tournament but they might i I certainly hope so yes yes but um what was interesting to me was that uh ilia shikshin i I believe he's probably widely regarded as the probably strongest uh player in in europe uh he he actually lost to uh kevin yang who isn't technically pro yet so that was very interesting um so let's see definitely because kevin's definitely very 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 strong I, I did look at some of the Kifus, especially the games where Ilya Shikshin got, got beat and also where uh, the North American players lost games. So there's only two losses so far, Brady and Ryan. I looked at uh, the games where they have lost. Also very interesting, but we might find some time to talk, talk about them later on, um, but not just not now. Um, okay, I haven't yeah. looked at the games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the Transatlantic League. And we're now on to Japan for the Meijin League Game 24. Ichiriki beat Motoki Katsuya. Uh, anything you want to say about this game, Gaza? Oh, um, let me see if I can just find this game again because I did. Uh, I did have a look at it. It was a bit of a capturing race, wasn't it? Or uh, it it ended up being um, this, there was this 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 fight here. Yeah, there was a yeah there was there was a bit of a crazy fight in the in the middle. Yeah. Sort of the upper middle. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, there was just, there was there was just this black group that was sort of being squeezed out by by white. Um. Yeah, if you. Yeah, the the top, uh, yeah, the top, and yeah, like the that white group at the top doesn't seem to be. A, you don't know if it's alive. Yeah, that that black group in the middle just seems to be, you know, clawing clawing for liberties. Yeah, and yeah, in the end, it's a bit of a capturing race, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's like a, a yeah. So. White finds this code. Probably, this code probably looks to me very favorable for White. Um, and of course, White is Ichiki and Motoki Katsuya is the black. Yeah, I I I do remember reading like a commentary. So so I ended up uh, they ended up fighting a code. It's like a capturing race, and Ichiki probably is likely to win that code. Um, so Motoki resigned. But I do remember reading a commentary about. Uh, uh, white a uh, black's uh, wedge on the top left and then when white atari instead of uh retreating his black stone so black did this nice trick move which is not uh, not a trick move but just kind of like throw in and just ignore his stones that's been atari and when white took he can uh, atari and connect and he set up this uh capturing race I believe at, at this point, Black wasn't really behind, according to AI. So it might even be uh, supposedly bad for Ichiriki, uh, somewhere around here. But 
uh, maybe the reading got too complex and it just didn't work out for black in the end but yeah yeah was... it's 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 certainly the the type of moves that i wouldn't have the balls to yeah. to make i'm i'm too scared to make moves like that because i i just worry like one slip and yeah or, or i haven't read it out properly and you know everything dies yeah, yeah i mean there's always that danger and uh, I, I guess what what comforts me is that even pros don't don't you know read it out all the time. They just leave mistakes in, on the board. So yeah, but yeah, that was that was quite interesting. But but uh, after after this game, what we have is basically uh, Ichiriki uh, won this game, uh, and now Ichiriki is basically uh, leading the league in terms of wins. Along with Shibano. Shibano. So, yeah. So, Ichiki is on uh, four wins out of six. Shibano has a game in hand, but has won four games as well. And, uh, yeah. But um, Ichiriki seems to be a favorable tie- tiebreaker. But is Meijin League, is the top two going to play off in the Meijin League? Um, no, it's <coughs> the winner. Right. If if it's outright, yeah, it's a winner. If there's a tie for first, then the top two... Will play off, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So that there will be a there will be a playoff, and if I look at the simulation, basically the strong the four strongest players are top four on the table. So Ichiriki, Shibano, Shu, and Yu. But unfortunately, Yu having Yu is games, Yu isn't Yu isn't mathematically eliminated, but no. um, he's not going to he's not going to um be the challenger. Let's right. just say, practically speaking, he's not going to be the challenger. Yeah, it's, because because he's only got three wins out of six. Yeah, it would take a lot of um, it would take a lot of results to go his way for him to finish top two. Right, because there's only two more games to go. For him, there's only two more games to go. Yeah, right. and, and yeah, and he can only get to five wins. So, what, if Ichiriki or Shibano get to six wins, yep, then it's already over for yep. Eugene Chu. Yep. Um, and one thing, one thing I, I did look at the table, and one thing I did find very interesting about Yu's record this this term was that you actually beat Xu Cha Yuan. You actually beat Ichiriki. Right? Yes, so that's two massive wins. But then he goes on to lose to Hane Naoki and Ita Atsushi. So yeah, two of two of the middle le- level players in this major league yeah middle and, tier yeah and he and he managed to beat two of the strongest uh but he's he's now basically like pra- almost practically out of contention so yeah yeah um has been yeah so it's anyway. it's it's been disappointing um his inconsistency in this league yeah he's not usually he's not that i wouldn't call him that much that inconsistent a player because you know, he he made the Gosse Challenger final. Yeah. He made the Hanimbo playoff. Yeah. Um. So he's obviously quite consistent. It's just that here, a couple of um, un- a couple of unexpected losses have um. Yeah. Have have sealed his fate. Yeah. So unfortunately. So. But I do think that he will. Remember, the top six of this league will be seeded for the next league. Right. So it's it's looking likely that he will make the top six and he can try again next year yeah so i mean his, his chance of being relegated is just eight percent it's not not that bad so yeah okay so yeah so i'm expecting him to stay on in this league and uh, see yes. what happens next year but uh well it it so we could be heading to a situation where ichiriki challenges for the honimbo and kisei and also Meijin, so wow, that's that's yeah. Really he already successfully challenged the Kise, and he's about to. He's he started his his Hanimbo challenge, which we discussed last week. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he, he could be challenging all three big of the big big titles in Japan, all of which are held. Well, all of which were held by the Yama Yuta. Yeah, and Yama, of course, just lost the Kise to. Um, yes. Um, to. To Ichiki, so yeah, we will see. We'll see what what happens there. Uh, what well, we will go on now and talk about the uh, 
tournament that you're very keen to talk about, the Yon Song? Yeah, the Yong Song. So this is um, a major in Korea. Yep. It's quite a fast time control, 20 minutes main time and 20 second Fisher increment oh, wow. per move. Yep. So every move that is made, uh, 20 seconds is added. Yep. Um, and this was, I believe, this was the final game in the round of 16. Yep. So, um, so this was Kim Ji Sok. And Kim Yun Ji, who was the only um, female player remaining in the tournament. Right. Yeah. And um, it was it was a very dominant performance by the more experienced player Kim, Kim Ji Sok. Sok. Yeah. So we're looking at the 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 uh, the knockout chart for the Yuan Sang. And yeah, basically the game we're talking about is Kim Ji Sok, Kim Yun Ji. So, so Kim Ji Sok is after beating Kim Yun Ji will be into the second round. Which, he'll be into the he'll be into the uh, quarterfinals. Yeah. So yeah. So quarterfinals. I think it's the second round. So it's actually uh, the third round. Right. It's the third round. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, he, he's into the third round and. Uh, what have we got here? We we have uh, another on the other side of the uh, so on on the third round the quarterfinal we have Park Yang Long, Hong Mu Jin, Kang Tong Yun, and Kang Tong Yun will face Kim Ji Sok next. Yeah, so so some some quick facts about all of these players. Park Yang Long, yeah, not very well known, but he did beat Park Chun Wan in the first round. Yes, yes. So that's why it's Park Young Ryong and yeah. not Park Jun Wan yes, <laughs> at the top yes, there. Yes. Hong Mu Jin made the semi final of the Yong Xiong last year. Yeah. Um, so he he seems to be a bit of an expert at at this um, a specialist at this tournament or this time control at least. Yeah. Um, so he's back. I mean he beat Lee Young Yu and An Sung Jun, two very strong Top twenty players. Yeah. Um, Kang Dong Yoon obviously ha- is, well, he, he also seemed to be an expert in these time at, at, at the fast games, considering his performance in the YK Construction Cup so yeah. far. Yeah. And Kim Ji Sok, well, you know, nothing really needs to be said about him. He's just good at everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the four quarter finalists on that side of the draw. Yeah. And on the bottom half, we have... So on the bottom half, we have, of course, at the very bottom, we have Shin Jin So. Yep. Um, no surprise there. Yep. Sim Jaik, um, a bit of an unknown name, but he is, I think he is top... I think he's he's definitely top 50 yep. in Korea. Um, he may actually be top 30. Let me is just he quick. also very young? Number thirty one in Korea. I don't think he's that young. Oh, he was born in ninety eight, so yeah, he's fairly young. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, he hasn't actually played many games this year. Yeah. Um, but most of the games he has played, he's won. He's got an eighty percent. He's got an eighty over eighty percent win rate this year. Right, that's crazy. Hmm. Um, so and he did beat, of course, he did beat Byun Sang Il. Um, so that's yeah. why Byun Sang Il isn't there. Yeah. And the other two quarter finalists are Kim Young Hoon. Yep. Uh, and notably, Kim Young Hoon was the person who just beat Shin Jin So in the YK yep. Construction Cup. So yep. that's why I said that there's a possibility they could meet soon yep. again. Uh, yep. They could meet in the semi final of the Yong Yeah. And yep. there's one thing I've noticed about Shin Jin So is um, when, when he loses to someone, he's very keen to play them again. Right. And yeah. sort of um, get revenge. Yeah. Um, so I think he he would he would um, definitely want to come up against Kim Young Hoon again. Yeah. But yeah. the other quarter finalist in his way is <laughs> Won Song Jin. Won Song Jin, yes. No. Um, who who we've discussed um, is on this nine. podcast last podcast. <laughs> he is not doing well. He is yes. not playing well. Yeah. Um, he's on a nine game losing streak and yeah. this weekend he's going to try to stop it 
yeah. becoming ten. Yeah, so he could he could go to ten. Now if if one does go to ten losses, that means Kim is now in the semi. And basically Sin Jin So has already played Sim Jake, right? Uh yesterday. Yes. And Sin Jin So has already won that game. Oh, uh, where a uh, spoiler alert? A spo- no, what? Not not so much spoiler because it's not even on Pro Weichi yet. Uh, I believe. Yes, it's it's not on Pro Weichi yet. Um, yes, yes, but it's but we, we will we will post we will post it. Yeah, we'll post it. Um, we'll post it anyway. But just to give you a bit of a heads up, Shinjin So did win that game. Yeah. Um, that was yesterday. And yeah, and there was there was another Yongxiang. Um, Oh, there's a there was a Yongxiang quarterfinal that was played today that I don't actually know the result of. <laughs> uh, Park Yonlong and Hun Mujin. Yes. Yes. Um, we we could try to look that up. Sh- shall we spoil that one as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna very very quickly look it up now. I, I already see know I'll... it. It's a uh, Hun Mujin uh, as black, one by Resonation versus uh, Park Yang Yong. So Hun Mujin, right. Hun Mujin is in the semi. So that 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 means Hong Mujin makes the semi final for the second straight year. Yeah, that's that's pretty good, and he's he's of course also in the strongest uh, league. Yes. Okay. So well, so we so, just the, so semi so semi final we're looking at Hong Mujin, the winner of, between Kang Dong Yun and Tim Ji Sok. That's the top top half of the the bracket. Yep. And the bottom we're looking at the winner of Kim Moon Kim Moon Yang, and Wen Song Jin. Versus Sin Jin So, so that's what we're looking at, and so we could be seeing we could be seeing a Kim versus Shin rematch. Um, yes. So yeah. Looking forward and to that. And it, it'll be a fast time control again. Yeah. Um. But for some reason, although Shin Jin So, he so he lost, he's lost. He hasn't won the previous three Maxim Cups. Yeah. Um. Which is fast time control. Yeah. He's he's only got a sixty percent win rate in this YK Construction Cup, but he has won the last two Yongsiongs. Right. So you can't really say that he's bad at fast time controls because no. he has and he has actually won the Maxim Cup as well in the past. That's right. So yeah, yeah, it's um, it's strange. Yeah. It, uh, he he yeah, it's it'll be. Whoever he plays against, um, Kim Young Hoon or Won Song Jin, it'll it'll be interesting. He, he he notably doesn't have strong, particularly strong relative records against either. I mean, they are quite strong. He's got a four three win record against Kim Young Hoon, and he's got a two two record against uh, Won Song Jin. Yeah, yeah, but neither of those are particularly insane. Yeah. Um, so it'll be an exciting semi-final, regardless. Yes. So I, I'm 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 really looking forward to this, uh, especially if there's a rematch between Kim and uh, and uh, Sin. Yes. And so, and if there is, I mean, yeah, you'll find it'll we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll find out. And, yeah. Uh, and and just to answer your question in the post there, are, are Kim Ji Sok and Kim Yun Ji related? Yeah. Almost certainly not. Okay. Even though they were. They were photograph, you know, hugging. All right. Okay. Yeah, that is that is a strange photograph, but I've I haven't heard any news or any commentary saying that they are related. And I would have I would have imagined that if they were, mm. it would have been mentioned. Yeah. But maybe they just come from the same hometown, or yeah. maybe maybe he was her mentor for a while, or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll, we'll find out. Um, yeah. So, um, that's that's the Yong Yongshan, uh, and we have three new Korean pros. Yes. Um, yes. So, any any kind of interesting news? So about? there was a yeah, there was a women's enrollment yeah. um, where most of the most of the women pros are selected through the women's enrollment yep. in Korea. And this time, so this was, I don't, I don't know which, which number they're up to. Oh, this was the fifty seventh women's enrollment competition, and they selected three of the women to turn pro. Yeah. Um, 
Um, so Ko Yun Seo and Lee Na Kyung, they both won. Um, there was there were four women left, and they they both won their their matches. And then the two losers were Seo Su Kyung and Kim Hee Su. Yep. And so they played off to determine the final selection spot, and and Kim Hee Su won that. Yeah. Um, so they're the three pros. Um, that makes the number of Korean professionals an even four hundred. Four hundred, yes. Although technically it's three hundred and ninety nine. And one who's currently suspended. <laughs> and who, who's that being suspended? Um, I don't remember her name, but she was suspended for cheating late last year. Oh, was it not Kim Yun Ji? No, Kim Yun Ji was suspended for cheating late 2020. Right. So that was another one. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't remember that. Uh, um, she uh, she's only like a two dan, so. Right, right, right. Okay. okay. Uh, it w- it wasn't a big name. Um. Uh, I'll see if I can find it, but I doubt it. Yeah, no, that's that's that, that's fine. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Also, um, yeah. Um, the the uh, Lee Lee Na Kyung is is now um, she's only thirteen. Oh wow. Um. So she and that makes her the youngest Korean professional currently. Right, so that's that's this um, young lady over here. Uh, the the one on the right, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. So pr- the previous youngest was um, Kim Min Soo. Yep. Who she turns fifteen in July. Right. Um. So yeah, she's over a year younger than than her. Um. So she and sh- so she's a. Choi Jong notably was also thirteen when she ch- turned pro. Yep. So you'll never you never know if um she could be the next Choi Jong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the more the more you know strong yeah. female players, the the, the, the better. Um, yeah. The yeah the um the other two are a little bit older. I think um Ko Yun Seo is eighteen and uh, Kim Hee Soo is seventeen. Yeah. Now I, I do wanna I do wanna raise a little bit of a trivia of sorts for Ko Yun Seo. And and this was kind of uh pointed out in the in the Chinese media. Uh so apparently the picture of her uh, in on the Korean uh, Baduk Association website where she turned pro uh was just uh like you know, just like a real life picture. But on her pro uh, on her player profile, she's got almost like unrecognizable, uh, you know, photos. Like, they, like they, the two photos would look completely different, like almost. But they are kind of the same person. They they are the same person. <laughs> they kind of yeah. the same. Well, they are the same person, but uh, it, it's hard to say. Um, but anyway, that's that's a bit of trivia that's picked up in the. In the I, uh, one one well, I I'll say this the same. You could say the same thing for Lee Sol Ju's. Um, Profile. Right. Like, um, when I when I say Lee Sol Ju's um, player profile on the website, it doesn't look anything like her in the um, in the articles on her for the Hoban Cup. Right, right. So, uh, so uh, the Korean Baduk Association's website is a little bit like Tinder. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> All right. So uh, on, on the on the picture of photos, apparently Yueno Asami. Um, has some um, change of profile uh, photo on the Nihon Keying website. That's what her picture profile picture looks like now. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. And I think that's 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 like a wrap for the week. And we have another post on here that says, uh, "Professionals losing on time with videos." What's what's? Oh yeah. That? So this was just um, um, a curiosity. Yeah. Um, that I had. Yeah. Um, I I've I've watched a lot of uh, live streams, yeah. and it's very interesting to see when a player loses on time. Um, in in amateur games, um, I've I've been involved in a time loss on one occasion. Um, my opponent, who I think was not 
entirely familiar with the Bioyomi system. Yeah. Lost on time. Um, if you've if you've never played a, a tournament before, and like it's your first time with a using a clock, yeah. it it's it can it's definitely possible to to think that um, to press half a second late and think that you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but the problem, yeah, the problem is once you once you press it late, it the the clock doesn't reset. It 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 just tells you you've lost some time. So you, there's no comeback. No way back. Yeah. But none of these, notably none of these games involved um, physically pressing a clock. Yeah. Um, there are there are a couple of these games that are online. Yeah. And either through making the move too late or through software malfunction, yeah. the timer ran down to zero. Yeah. And the other games... Oh, there is actually one... No, sorry, there, I, I, I do... I um, have to correct myself. There's one game there, a Japanese game, between Ayama Yuta and Sushi One, which did involve a clock. Yeah. But that game was at, was at what I would call an ultra-fast time control, and it wasn't really a surprise right. to see one of them losing on time. That that one, that one, that one's probably the least shocking of all of them. Right. But there were, there were uh, three games there that involved um, a... A, a note taker who actually um, counts down the Buoyomi for you. Yeah. Um, there's no clock. Yeah. And yet these players still did not make the move in time. Right. And on two of those occasions, it was Choi Chol Han that lost on oh, time. Wow. Yeah. Oh wow. He, he... One of them. One of them was to Hong Mu Jin in the Yongseong. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Um, that was sort of inconsequential because. Hong Mu Jin had played a brilliant game up to that point and was easily winning. Yeah. Um, the other game was a very consequential game in the Korean Baduk League. Right. Yeah. Um, against against Celtrion. Yeah. Um, where Kang Seung Min was behind by two and a half points. It was basically in the end game. I think they were. It was almost at the point where they were just making moves so they could get to the count. Yeah. They could they could count the game at the end. Yeah. Um, but Choi Chol Han crazily didn't make a move in time. Right. And from from a completely winning position, he lost on time. And Celtrion won that match three two. Right. And they only made the finals. By the skin of their teeth, any of, if they'd lost any of their matches in the regular season that they won, they yeah. wouldn't have made the finals. Oh wow! So, so that win basically was the difference between them making the finals and not, yeah. and not making the playoffs. Sorry, yeah. or not. And in the end, it came back to bite um, Choi Chol Han's team because it turned out that Posco, Choi Chol Han's team, and yeah. Celtrion were had to fight it out for a place in the grand final and yeah. Celtrion won. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. So, all, all stem from this one you know, crazy time loss. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a lot of consequences. And yeah, it, it makes you wonder. Um, I have, I have looked at some um, comments and I think that it's all just speculation, but it makes you wonder if Choi Johan may have a bit of a hearing problem. Yeah. That's, that's what I, what, what I was going to say. If, if it's happened to him twice, so yeah. So well, let's let's see. Um, but um, yeah, the most recent incident that I found is is also the most controversial. It, it was the um, Nongshim Cup, Shinjin So versus Miyu Ting. Yeah. Game. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. Yeah that 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 one took half a day to get resolved. Yeah, um, I, think I I I really don't know if i can trust any of the reporting in the chinese media but yeah but can do you want to give a, a little a, a very quick recap of what actually happened that game because yeah. obviously we've never covered it in a podcast before right right so, so of course this is a very crucial uh nongshim cup game so of course shin jin so is the last player standing for korea so if shin jin so were to lose his game then uh korea is up uh, so only china and japan left so that that would be probably the might be the first time in the history of Nongshim Cup where Korea would come last. It, it would be. Yeah, it, it would, would be. be. Yeah. So, so that was a really big game, and of course Miyu Ting was uh, leading for for a large chunk of the game, 
And then uh, Sinjin Saw just you know worked his magic, working his way up. But at, at that point, according to AI, uh, Sinjin Saw was still leading. Oh no, Sinjin Saw was, was was still like behind, trailing. Yeah, a little bit. A, a little, little bit. bit. Uh, but so so, so Sinjin Saw was kind of coming back. I in in the interview, Sinjin Saw basically said, uh, "When I saw the light at the end of the tunnel, this thing happened." So Sinjin Saw thought that he was coming from like. Uh, from the basically from the depths not, of hell yeah like basically that to like almost kind of he, he's about to win you know he, he's gonna break me you think and sinjin so at that point just played an atari so and that atari was like it's pretty obvious how you respond right uh it's not one of those ataris where you can give up so me you think definitely not going to give it give it up but me you think was probably using that time to um probably maybe read uh you know some previous the next the next set of moves or he was just ruminating on his uh you know his his mistakes to let sinjin so come back so close whatever it may be me you think just didn't click in on uh, in time and uh, they kept a video record of that and what happened was that um uh yeah so when, when i look when i watched the, the 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 stream when that happened basically there was inaction from both pairs for like a good 10 minutes or so so I, so I was not sure what's happening uh, and then it turns out that it, it was it was yeah uh, me you was was basically ran out of time but they so then they look at the video and they they really couldn't decide from the video what actually really happened and as it was reported in the Chinese media what they have said was me you was basically they had to go to the the art the, the, the arbiters and there was three of them one is the uh one 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 person is from china one is from korea and the third one was from the international go federation right so they had three there um obviously in, in case of a they had to intervote with like a tie break but it just so happens that that the international federations a uh, go federations uh arbiter was also korean ethnic korean so basically you have two korean and one chinese voted and the two koreans voted to uh for me to lose this game right so and that was that was reported for a good few hours that that's what's going to happen but apparently behind the scenes china just fought tooth to nail about this decision they protested yeah, yeah. yes like probably very strongly because it it, it was like early in, it was like maybe 2 a.m. or something when when the next news item came out saying that hey they actually decided to void the game and and according to some reports what had happened was neither the Korea or Chinese side could agree on you know what 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 to do because obviously Korea would would say oh you know Sinjin so win by by time or China was saying well clearly according to the video it's it's not it's not clear or me didn't lose on time it's the software's fault. So apparently they got the the Japan, Japan Nihon Kin and Kansai Kin involved, and they got this third party to look at the video and decide and kind of just decide what happens, and they agreed to abide by the ruling of this third party presumably, and and apparently the Japanese had looked at the the video and they said we couldn't decide what had happened, uh, you know, just 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 too close to call. So they decided to avoid the game and, and, and just replay the game the next day. Um, so that's that's the recap. Um, yep. So yeah, a couple a couple more comments here. Yeah. Um, Shinjin So and Miyu Ting were both stayed in the room that they played right. for a couple of maybe a couple of hours after the incident. Right. And during that time, they didn't have their phones. They didn't. They didn't have anything like it, when they play they don't they don't have their phones and every time they go to the bathroom and come back they have to get scanned yeah for any devices yeah and so presumably those sorts of conditions were still considered to be in effect for the for a couple for at least a couple of hours after the incident i'm guessing just in case they resumed the game yeah or something like that um, yeah, and another thing, so in the aftermath, as you said, um, Shinjin So, um, the game was voided. Yeah. Um, Shinjin So ended up 
winning the rematch, yeah. um, which was played from from the start. They didn't they didn't go through this this position again. They they replayed. They just had a fresh new game. Yeah. Um, and then Shinjin So ended up beating using Chi, Koje, and Ichiriki Ryo to win the Nongshim Cup in, yeah. in a, you know, just an absolutely spectacular performance individually. Yeah. Um, personally, I believe that the right decision was made in the end. Right. I think that I think that it was pretty clear that from the sound yeah. that Miyu Ting made the move in time, right. but but I'm willing to, uh, like, I have to concede that it's not necessarily, uh, it's, it's a possibility that the sound isn't synced with the video right. that's available online. Yeah. And you can't see, you can't see his hand movements. Yeah. Because the video is not high enough quality. Yeah. So assuming that the sound is in sync, he definitely moved in time yep. and it was a software problem, which did occur um, two years prior in a, yeah. in a, in a Nongshim cup as well. Yeah. Um, in a, I, I, I made that, I put that video up there as for that one as well. Yeah. And finally, I think the biggest shame of all of this is yeah. that the game was voided yeah. because it was such an incredibly exciting game. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it would definitely have been a candidate for game of the year. Yeah. Um, like it was that good. It, it, I think it, I think the um, the the LG Cup final game one between Yang Dingxing and Xin Jinso had had similar, had a similar style, yeah. where one player was was sort of dominant in the opening, and then Xin Jinso fought back. But yeah. this one, this one genuinely was on another level. Yeah, um, I really do, I really do think so. And I, I was just so disappointed that. That such you know a masterpiece wasn't going to get finished. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. But you know that's that's what happens. That's what happens when you use you play online, and they have to play online. They really have no other choice in in this COVID environment at the moment. But yeah. um. I, the I, the right I think the right decision was made in the end, and I do think that I I think that Shinjin So would have won that game yeah. anyway. Yeah because of the way he fought back but yeah. um yeah I, I mean by by the end me was would probably feel pretty 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 bad because like Sinjin's all fought back from a pretty pretty bad situation like yeah he would be thinking how can I let him let him do that and I I know I, I could have just won this um that would have affected me psyche for sure and yeah and, it's and, like what it, what do you, what do I have to do to, to yeah, beat him yeah and and of course this what what of course this as you mentioned this happened exact almost exactly the same thing happened about two years prior between Park Jun Huan and Fan Ting Yu and that's why yeah. uh, China probably fought so hard for for this to reverse the the decision because it, it's it's president it, yeah because it's yeah it's 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 president obviously this is not we're not discussing you know British law here but it's happened before so yeah but and, and, oh, I think yeah I think the yeah it's the it's i mean the the it's not it's not to say you know he he lost on time therefore it must be the software fault yeah i mean obviously you still need to to demonstrate that he tried to make the move in time yeah. but the precedent is that this has this issue has arisen in the past yeah um that that makes it that gives more legitimacy to to the idea that the software could be at fault yeah. And, yeah. Okay. The, the only I'll add two two things to this discussion. One is that the uh, vice president of the Chinese Weiqi Association, uh, Hua Xueming, she was a very strong uh, women player. In, oh yes, yeah, she, yeah she was. She was. You know, yeah. the the precursor to Rui Nawe. Yeah, and and she she said, in a in a fairly I guess, um, in in a fairly non negotiable way I guess, uh, in that she said. This happened this time, but in future we will not try to resolve. We have agreed not to resolve, like time losses, uh, in in any way. We have to abide by what the software is saying, and he said that this is probably the last time this will happen, and and probably for for good reasons. And she also said to basically, I I believe for the ears of the Chinese pros, he said, 
we we have to accept there's a risk that if you if you want to click in the last second that something like this will happen so it's a risk that we know of and we should be aware of and we will not be you know accepting any kind of uh you know challenge uh like of this nature any any further so i, I suspect behind the scenes they 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 and the you know everybody sat together the like korean japanese chinese they just thought this is ridiculous we don't want this happening again so if this hap ever happens again we just go with what the software says you know so they they kind of agree on that and this this will no longer happen anymore so hopefully that's the end of this and actually what's better is end of COVID and everybody can play face to face again yeah uh, so that's, that's number one so the second thing that I did hear in a, in a Chinese podcast was that they did complain about the technology being used by the the software being played being used to play these games which I believe it's either it's Thai Gem it might have been on Thai Gem platform they did complain about one of these platforms having uh, issues with you know uh, the last counting the last second uh, they, they kind of attribute it to, to the software and they did say that for example using the fox uh online platform that does, that almost never happens on fox and the chinese players almost always play on fox so they kind of get got used to clicking on the last second and it's not not, ha not having any issue with that but uh so whatever the story it is technical or not hopefully uh this is the last time we'll see these kind of um, things happen you know avoiding well time. yeah i i do hope that that sooner rather than later we'll we'll be back to the normality of face to face yeah but um yeah just re just relying on the software just having a hard and fast rule that whatever happens to the software happens yeah. i mean it's good to it's good to be rigid and so that there's no wiggle room but yeah. it is a double edged sword in that if the software just decides to completely wow. screw you over and yeah. like you make a move of 20 seconds and it just doesn't register at all it just looks yeah. a bit ridiculous in that case yeah no, like no, no, it does. it's yes. like you just completely screwed yeah. <laughs> Like, or it could be like the internet really does have latency issue at that exact moment, you know. I, I think they did have to cancel maybe the LG Cup for like once. Uh, I can't remember, maybe one competition because there's internet issues or something. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway. I mean, you, and we've heard we there are, there are stories like that in the chess world and, and also yeah. in the in the amateur, the World Amateur Go Championships. Um, yeah. Last year, the Australian representative um had a had a game against the Taiwanese representative and there there ended up being a major typhoon right. in Taiwan yeah um that completely that completely um ended Taiwan the Taiwan players game yeah and according to the rules of the tournament that there, there was no uh, negotiation the Taiwan player was determined to have lost right um but the Australian player insisted that the game be continued. Yep. Um, and the Taiwanese player ended up winning the game, but the Australian player won the Fair Play Award. Yeah. For the yeah. World Amateur Go Championships. So. Yeah. Well. Well done. Well done there. And yeah. I, I, actually, I, I I did want to make another small point in that because the the Nongshim Cup, the, the Japanese players, they have their schedule like set up way ahead of time, and they were gonna put out you. Uh, Zheng Qi for the next game and because of this voided game they actually have to push back one day the schedule so that's that right yes they had to push back every game because yes. this was the last these were the last four rounds and they were going to be played on four consecutive days so they had to push back every game by one day yeah so like imagine if they they had a clash so bad that they couldn't swap out the, the like Japan just couldn't play one of the games like that that would have been in the like disaster so that, yeah, that would have been a complete disaster because Japan, like the teams are set in advance. Like the yeah. teams are announced before the first round is played. You can't, yeah. you can't change the team mid tournament. And and this this Nongshim Cup is played over like six or seven months. Yeah. So, oh well. Um, yeah. So this this is another classic, uh, Gaza. So this is definitely going to go, go into the, the pin section. And... <laughs> So yeah, I love I love this place where you revisit it every now and then. But well, that's... I'll add to it. I'll add to it if there are if there are any more games. Yeah, that's just so awesome. Uh, so that's that's a wrap for this week. Uh, thanks, Gaza, again, and uh, we'll we'll hear we we'll hear from from us next week. 
Yeah, next week is going to be a bigger week. This was definitely the quietest week we've had yeah. um, in this podcast lifespan. But next week is, well, we've got some, we've got the international calendar coming back. Yep. Of course, the very first Hoban Cup. Hoban Cup, yep. Uh, um, this weekend, we've got the Azu Central Hospital Cup, the yep. final rounds for the to determine the challenger. Yep. And, uh, yeah, and also the next week, the start of King of Kings in China. Oh, this, it's it's going to be a massive week. We've got Hanimbo Game 2. Yep. Uh, we've got a Taiwan Tianyuan Game 4. Wang Yunjun Xiao. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a massive week. Uh, the yeah. biggest, biggest of which is Hoban, so that there will be a seven-day continuous non-stop action. So looking forward to that. Well, yeah, we'll have five. I think we'll have... Um... We'll, uh, we'll be able to get the first six rounds. Six rounds, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, absolutely awesome. So, uh, that's it. And, of course, yeah. right after next week, LG Cup. Bang. Yeah. That'll, that'll be awesome. Yeah. Non-stop action. Non-stop go. Not, not non-stop. So, all right. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, so, thank you very much, Gaza. And we'll yep. see you next time. All right. See you. See ya.